I was on a plane the other day. I actually had the urge to elbow an old lady in the face. <laughs> it was like compelling. It was unbelievable. You know, when you go to get off a plane, there's like rules when you go to get off the plane, all right? It goes row by row by row. And this lady was all like, ooh, I'm 90. I get to cut everybody, right? So I'm competitive. I start fucking boxing her out, right? <laughs> start bringing down like the overhead luggage, you know? So she just starts like waddling around me. And all of a sudden, I just feel my elbow like, dude, you're going to take this shit? <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. The whole half of the plane is watching it. Come on, man. Come on, man. Dude, we got a wide open shot. Just, just... Just real light, poof, you don't get to hit it that hard. And then he could play it off. I'm literally talking to my elbow like, dude, come on, man, we can't do this shit, all right? This chick's like 95 years old, we can't do it. And I thought I had my body under control, and she got like to right about there, and then I felt my foot like, dude, we could still trip her. We could still trip her, just throwing that out there. If you want to learn about nature, you watch Discovery Channel or one of these, you know, nature programs where they have a guy on safari and he's studying from afar. Crocodile hunter and all, come on, every episode. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Look over there, right there, there's a tiger. That <laughs> tiger weighs 800 pounds and it could kill a man in 10 seconds. I'm gonna touch it. <laughs> Hi, tiger! <laughs> Next episode, hey, that's a King Cobra, the most venomous snake in all the planet. One boy, now I'm dead. I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> He's angry! If he really wanted people to think he was out there, man, America, we should have borrowed him and sent him to Iraq. <laughs> With no gun, just a camera crew. Can you imagine how bad that would have freaked out the enemy, you know? You're freaking a soldier working for Al-Qaeda and you're out there, you know? And he's walking towards them wearing shorts. And he's walking up to him. Hey, look over there. It's an Al-Qaeda member. An Iraqi soldier, one of the most dangerous creatures in all the planet. One push of a button and I'm gone. I'm gonna poke him with a stick. So I'm totally pro teachers fucking the kids. I'll tell you why. Look, I'm very... I'm not okay with it. I'm pro. I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down on it. I'll tell you why. I looked up these little psychos that shoot up the schools, you know, these little psychopaths, right? Every single one of them said they did it for the same reason. Not because of bullying, by the way. They said they did it because they weren't getting late. <laughs> we got a question we need to ask ourselves, guys. Are these teachers monsters or are they heroes? <laughs> Forget no child left behind. Suck a dick, save a school. That's a slogan. Yes. Yes. We got to keep our babies safe. We got any female teachers in the audience tonight? I hope you're willing to go the extra mile. I'm not joking. You see a weird kid during lunch? You know the weird kid, the kid whose jeans don't touch his sneakers? You see one of those hovering jeans kids in the corner twisting a squirrel's head off his shoulders? <laughs> Suck that kid's dick. <laughs> Empty balls make safe halls. That's why I study y'all, envy y'all. I'm, I'm envious of y'all. Y'all are a race. Y'all do whatever the fuck y'all want to do. Y'all you know y'all are free. Y'all are the only race of people that could look at a wild lion and go, I can be friends with that. <laughs> That's why y'all are always on when animals attack. You will never see black people on when animals attack. You might see us on when cops attack, but you will never see us on when animals attack. Y'all would do shit like tranquilize a lion and hold that motherfucker till he wake up. And that'd be heavy shit to y'all. Y'all be in the camera. <sighs> well... My partner Bob and I, we've been tracking this particular beast for quite some time. 
Her name is Utulu. She's six months old. We just shot her with five cc's of tetracordaline darts. When she gets up, she's gonna be fucking pissed. Oh my God, Bob, do you feel your heart pounding? This is amazing. Oh my God, she's getting a plow. Oh, she mauled me. What an experience. The Africans don't be out there fucking with the lions. They ask him, Mr. Matumbu, why you don't play with the lion? I'm not fucking with that motherfucker. Fuck him and fuck you. That shit is not in the brochure. I'm not doing that shit. When my shift is over, I want to go home to my children, Mangulu, Mungala, and oof, 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 oof. I can't do it fucking with that. When the shit you're out, you better come, I will leave you in the car. Hi, Noa, Noa, yeah. Um, it's rules. If you're affected by the volcanic ash cloud, um, but I had friends that were stuck all over the world and they missed weddings and funerals and they had to put themselves up in a hotel for extra days that they hadn't budgeted for and they couldn't get their money back because the airlines were saying, no, we can't pay you because the insurance companies won't pay us because they're saying it's an act of God. Well, what isn't an act of God? <laughs> no, if you believe in God, that's sort of a definition of him, isn't it? <laughs> that he does everything. Isn't that right? Everything is an act of him. He's all-powerful. He's everywhere at once. He invented everything. There was nothing before him. He invented time, everything. He's across it all, okay? He doesn't miss a trick, and he's not absent-minded. A volcano going off isn't like him going, fuck, I left the oven on. You know, it's... <laughs> and who are these insurance companies that can decide what is and isn't an act of God? How do they know, okay? Have they got a hotline to God? They call him up, do they? Ring, 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 ring. Yellow. Uh, could I speak to God, please? Speaking. Oh, I didn't think you'd answer the phone yourself. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, um, that volcanic ash cloud. Uh, was that you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was an act of me, all right. <laughs> so I shouldn't pay out. No, don't fucking pay him a penny, son. No. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. While well, I've got you here, um, did you make a tree fall on Steve Baxter's car? There's a lot of Steve Baxters. Um, Steve Baxter, 2 Acacia Road, Hounslow. It happened at 2.15 on the 3rd of June this year. 2.15, 3rd of June? No, that wasn't me. I was in Africa that day giving AIDS to babies. I'm trying to like make it so women just like understand a little bit, of, like just to sympathize. It's like we're, we're like sport fishermen. This is what I'm saying. Men like to fish. And sport fishing is different from catching fish for food. You just get it, you get it, you catch it, and you, you know, you, you show your friends. Because you want them to know that you, you can catch fish. You take a couple of pictures so you can show people the fish that you have the ability to catch. And then you release it back into the water. But a lot of women in here, you have boyfriends or husbands, you a fish that jump back on the boat. <laughs> and just was like flapping, looking at me like. Hi, I was wondering if you're gonna be fishing here again next week, like. Yeah, for other fish. Get off my boat. Is that how you treat all the fish? You'd be like, oh, God damn. Nope, I'm sorry, sweetie. You're the last fish I ever wanted to be with. Now you're stuck. You're stuck with the last fish who was loving you and fighting hard to be on your boat. Then she got comfortable, and now she, instead of doing this, she's like, so... We've been together for like... A year now, why do you still have a boat? You'd be like... So what's she trying to say? I can't catch fish no more? Why do you need to catch a fish? Because if I lose my ability to catch fish, then you're not going to find me sexy no more. So you got to smell fish on me so that you know I can catch fish so you can act right. That's like, guys, you meet your girl, she was a hoe. 
like had whole, like she put old booty and this and that. You got to let her do that. Don't start trying to frump her up and get her fat and get her foul. Because that's why you like her. I don't want no woman that no other guy's trying to I don't want a woman that I can send to the store at 2 in the morning. Because nobody's going to try to rape her. Like I go, go get some bread at 3 in the morning. Hey, cut through the alley, bitch. Because... Because I talk to the junkies, they don't want it, they ain't got, they don't like it. Remember, it's three o'clock in the morning. It's three o'clock in the morning. I look out the window. It was a fucking baby standing on a corner. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> and the baby, the baby didn't even look scared. He was just standing there. I mean, it made me sad. It made me sad, really. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to help the baby. <laughs> I was like, mm, I don't trust you either. I'm sorry. Click. Click. The old baby on the corner trick, eh? I'm not going to fall for that shit. Where's this limousine driver? You know, I stopped feeling bad. As time goes by, I start feeling worse. Like, man, what is wrong with me? What the hell is wrong? I'm scared of a baby. And this baby could be in trouble. He might need my help. I got to do something. But I wasn't going to get out the car. I'm serious, man. I just cracked the window a little bit. There's an old limousine. I can roll it down. Hey, baby. Baby, go home. Man, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck are you doing up? <laughs> the baby said, I'm selling weed, nigga. I said, oh. Shit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to buy two bags from the call miner. Let me get two, let me get two corners. Yeah. Got back in the car and rolled me a joint, man. So, that shit was scary, man. Every once in a while, like a crackhead would come up to the car and look in the window. It was like Jurassic Park and shit. He'd be looking on the car. <laughs> hey, get out of here, cracky. <laughs> that baby was still standing there, man. Then I started feeling bad again. Yeah, weed make you feel guilty sometimes. You know. Man, what is wrong with me, man? I have just bought weed from, a, from an infant. I can't condone this kind of behavior. What am I thinking? I can't let the fear ruin my morals. <laughs> Gotta do something. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> Stop selling weed, all right? You got your whole life ahead of you. He said, fuck you, nigga. I got kids to feed. I said, God, <laughs> dang it. A lot has changed. One thing's for sure, I'm still the fluffy guy. <laughs> And I say fluffy because that is the politically correct term. For those of you that don't remember, I used to say that there were five levels of fatness. Reason why I say used to say is because now there are six. Uh-huh, I met the new one in Las Cruces. Uh, the original five levels are big, healthy, husky, fluffy, and damn! People ask, what could be bigger than damn? The new level's called, oh, hell no. <laughs> What's the difference? You're still willing to work with level five. <laughs> Example, if you're on an elevator and you're with your friend and this really big guy gets on and you and your friend look at each other and you're like, damn. <laughs> but you still let the big guy ride your elevator. That's the difference. Level six, you see walking towards your elevator. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> no! 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 one time racism saved my life, man. I was, I was on a plane. 
I, w I, was, coming, I was coming from overseas, and uh, I don't know how this guy got a machine gun on the plane, but he stood up, man. He said, everybody, get on the fucking ground. Nobody look at my face. I started freaking out. Because he was Chinese, I was like, why is he talking like that? <laughs> he was screaming and crying. I was the only brother on the plane. Well, I, I thought I was the only brother. I looked over, there was one other black dude. He was from Nigeria. I, I looked over to him, he was looking right in my face, man. He didn't say two words to me, he just looked at me, he was like... <laughs> He didn't need to talk, I know just what he was talking about. I looked right back at him, I was like. <laughs> Some white dudes on the front of the plane seen us, they were like, oh my God. I think those black guys are gonna try to save us. Mm-mm. <laughs> We were just communicating that we understood the situation. We were both seeing the same thing. What we understood was simple. Terrorists don't take black hostages. That's the truth. I have yet to see one of us on the news reading the hostage letters. Um, mm. They is treating us good. Uh, we all chilling and shit. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ray Ray and Big Steve and uh, Central Newport.